Hey guys, my name is Jamin. Thank you so much for visiting my YouTube channel where I try to bring you a wide variety of computer upgrade and repair videos. In this video, I'm working on a Dell G5 15 series gaming laptop. I'm gonna show you how to fix the error of Windows boot failed at startup. Maybe you get another error saying no OS or no operating system. I'll show you how to troubleshoot that in this video. Okay, so turn your computers off. Let's get ready to start this project. One word of advice, check out the FAQs below in the description if you have any questions. I do try to keep those updated as often as I can. It could save you some time getting an answer, but I do try to answer your questions and comments at least a couple times a day. So we're gonna run the diagnostic test from Dell to see if it can give us a little more specific information on what may be going wrong. So to access the Dell diagnostic test, we're gonna hit our power button and start tapping on F12 right away. And the next thing you're gonna see is a screen that looks somewhat like this. There are a lot of BIOS versions out there, guys. There's a lot of diagnostic versions out there, so your screen may not look exactly like this, but you should be able to find the options that I'm gonna show you. In this BIOS, I'm gonna navigate with my arrows, and I'm gonna come down to where it says Diagnostics. I'm gonna hit Enter. Where color bar is displayed, I'm gonna hit yes. And as you can see, it's continuing to scan my computer. Hopefully this doesn't go on too long. Some of you may have options. You may have a quick scan, a short scan. Um, you may have a hard drive scan, uh, a storage scan. Keep in mind, hard drive and storage is kind of the same thing. Um, specifically, run your hard drive and storage scans if you have the option. I didn't have an option, it's kind of scanning everything, but uh, you can either scan everything or you can do the hard drive and storage specifically for the problem that we're trying to troubleshoot here. You may get to a point like this, this box says no problems have been found with this system. Do you want to run the remaining memory tests? Uh, this will take about three hours. Again, you don't have to run the memory tests for this problem, we're shooting more for the hard drive and the storage tests to see if they're healthy. Okay, so there are several possible outcomes you could see from this diagnostic scan. The first option, like mine, your hard drive is healthy. In that case, we move on. Most likely, it's accurate and your hard drive is okay. The second possible outcome of the diagnostic scan is that it cannot run the scan and it doesn't see your hard drive. It'll tell you hard drive not installed, check cables, um, it'll tell you unavailable, for, or whatever it says, it cannot see the hard drive. That may mean the hard drive is bad. It could mean the hard drive is loose. The third possible outcome is that it says your hard drive failed the test. For those two last outcomes, either it can't see it or it fails it, we're gonna double check. We're gonna go in and physically reseat the hard drive. That's where we unplug it and plug it back in to make sure it's not just loose and then we're gonna run the scan again. I'll show you how to reseat the hard drive now. As you can see guys, my computer is currently sitting on an anti-static mat. Um, either this or an anti-static bracelet are really good ideas uh, before getting in your computer to limit the chance that you're going to damage anything. If you guys would like any suggestions on tools or supplies that you need for your project, check out the link above. It'll be a link to my Amazon store. In my shop, guys, there are several lists down bottom. Repair tools is one of them. After clicking on that, you'll see some hand tool kits, uh, some anti-static gear, a lot of things that I use in my shop. So I'm gonna take my screwdriver, I'm gonna undo this one single screw right there in the middle, and then you can just pop your panel up like that. It's pretty easy. It comes up fairly easily. There's the inside of your computer, there's your battery. So keep in mind guys, before doing anything inside a computer, it's always best to remove the battery first. This limits your chances of damaging things, so I'll show you how to take that out first. So your battery is held down by a screw there, there, and there, and it's plugged into your motherboard there. I'm not sure if yours will be the same way, but my battery cable is labeled battery and motherboard. So it's coming right in there into the motherboard. So I'm gonna go around first and take out these three screws. And then I'll zoom in a little more to show you that plug. So this plug, it's a white plastic plug that attaches to the wires and that plug goes into a brass 
port on the motherboard. So instead of pulling on the black wire portion, you can break plugs that way. I'm gonna take a plastic pry tool and I'm gonna go on either side of the white plug and push it out a little at a time until I jimmy the whole thing out. It may be a little slower, but it's safer. There you go, so now it's out. And then your battery just comes right out like that. Okay, so here's your hard drive, or it'll be one of your solid state drives. Uh, and this is your solid state drive right there. So I'm gonna zoom in and show you how to take these out right now. Okay, so this your hard drive is usually held into a computer this way with a hard drive caddy. It's a separate component that screws into your hard drive before screwing into the computer to keep the hard drive stable. It's got two screws in the bottom, two screws on the top, and your hard drive plugs into the motherboard here with this ribbon cable. So I'm gonna unscrew these four screws first. So after removing those screws, you should be able to just lift your hard drive up right out of its place. And then to unplug it, you grab the port and unplug it from holding that port, not holding the ribbon cable because you'll break it. The solid state drive is a little easier. It's held in by one screw. You'll just go get that one screw out. The solid state drive will lift up and then you just slide it out of its place like that. After reseeding your hard drive, we're gonna try the diagnostic scan again. If it comes back healthy this time, then you found your problem, your hard drive was loose. It does happen if you hit it or if, or if the computer falls. Uh, if you're getting the same error though, either uninstalled, unavailable, or failed, then most likely your hard drive is bad. You wanna replace it. One cool thing to shout out, if you do have to replace your hard drive, you may wanna to upgrade to a solid state drive. They're faster, they break less, could be a good chance to do that. After installing the new hard drive, for those of you that are doing that now, you're gonna to have to install an operating system to it. I'll have links below in the description showing you how to install Windows 10 and Windows 11 if you need those links. For those of you who are still watching the video for a solution, it means that your hard drive is showing up as healthy in the diagnostic scan, but your computer's still not starting. At this point, we've ruled out the hardware and we're looking at either a BIOS or an operating system issue. So let me show you some steps in BIOS where we can troubleshoot those. Okay, so to access BIOS, I'm gonna hit the power button and start tapping on F12 right away. Some of you will still have the use of your mouse in BIOS or in certain sections of BIOS. Um, some of you will use your arrow keys or tab keys. So play around, find out how you can get around in BIOS. Me, I'm gonna use my arrow keys right now. I'm gonna go down to BIOS setup. And I'm gonna hit enter. I'm then gonna arrow down to the date and time settings. Believe it or not guys, if your date and time settings in BIOS is wrong, it could stop BIOS from loading properly, which then could stop Windows from loading properly. So change the date and time so it's correct for you wherever you are, save and exit or apply, and then shut the computer down, reboot, see if that solves your problem. If this solves your problem guys and your computer restarts normally this time, and every time after, it could have just been a one-time computer error in BIOS. They do happen, it may not be a big deal. If this solves your problem, but next time you go to start your computer, you notice the date and time is wrong again, and you have to do this every time to start your computer correctly, you may be looking at a bad CMOS battery. That's the computer component that's supposed to keep BIOS powered even when the computer turns off so that it can save its settings. If it's losing power and losing its date and time settings, you may have to replace your CMOS battery. Just to show you where that CMOS battery was, guys, earlier when we were in this computer, it's right up here, above your hard drive and your solid state. It's this little round component that's wrapped in electrical tape, plugged into the motherboard here. So to replace it, you would unplug this. This could be held on by double-sided tape. It should just rip off, and you would put the new one in there. If the date and time settings do not seem to be the problem and they're correct, then we'll move on and we'll keep troubleshooting. So I'm gonna go down here under Support Assist System Resolution. You guys may see it in a different tab, um, but there I find Auto OS Recovery or Support Assistant OS Recovery. Try those to troubleshoot for your operating system. 
Again, there are many different versions of BIOS as mentioned earlier. So in your BIOS, if you can find any of those recovery or repair or restore options, if you can find any of those, try them. That will repair any operating system issues if BIOS can access and repair those. If none of those work or if you can't find any, we're gonna move on and we're gonna try changing another setting in BIOS. To check which way you're booting, we're gonna arrow down here to boot sequence. And if you guys notice here, there's a legacy and a UEFI option. If your computer allows for it, you may have to read through this, if your computer allows for it, whatever you're on, we're gonna try changing to the other one. So if you currently have UEFI selected, we're gonna select legacy. We're gonna apply, save and exit, try to boot up. If you currently have legacy selected, we're gonna try to switch over to UEFI, save and exit, and boot up. If you see some sort of error when you're trying to start it that you can't make that change because PTT security is enabled, I'll show you how to go shut that off. You're gonna go over to your security. Um, here it's a drop down. you may have a tab up top, but either way, go to your security. Down here it says PTT security. And as you can see here, it, it's on. So we're gonna uncheck that. Um, and then we're gonna hit uh, apply and that'll allow you to make that change if your security is interfering with it. So now we're left at kind of the same situation we were in with changing the date and time. If when you change these legacy versus UEFI settings in BIOS and that solves your issue, then great. Um, hopefully it stays that way and BIOS doesn't change that setting back next time you turn off your computer. If it does, same situation as date and time. If BIOS is losing settings, you may want to replace a CMOS battery. If changing the UEFI and legacy settings does not solve the problem, then we've kind of ruled everything out here other than operating system. We've looked at your hardware, we've reseeded it, we've looked at a bunch of bio settings, and at this point we've even tried recovery, repair, or restore options in BIOS for your operating system. If we can't do it there, if we can't recover or repair your operating system from BIOS, at this point, I would try my last option and that's reinstalling the operating system new. Again, there'll be links below in the description on how to install Windows 10 and Windows 11, assuming your hard drive is good because we already did the diagnostic scan on it. Once those installs go through, remember, after you install a new version of an operating system, you want to get all the updates processed so that it doesn't lag, it doesn't lack security or system updates. There'll be a video link below in the description as well how to run all those updates. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I look forward to seeing you on my next video.